Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. You can go ahead and be turning in your Bibles to Luke 17 while we do a little uh, introductory discussion here. Uh, you know, everybody has their kind of their favorite teachers they like to listen to. And that's all well and good if they're teaching the uncompromising word of faith and, you know, aren't tickling your ears. That's, you don't want to listen to those kind of teachers. But uh, one of my favorite teachers to listen to is Keith Moore. I just love to listen to Keith Moore. He just, somehow, he hits me right where I live. And uh, he said something recently that got me off on a study. And that's usually the way it happens. Uh, you know, somebody will be teaching, somebody will say something, and you'll go, ooh, and you'll start studying it out. And so that's what I did, and we're going to look at that here in just a minute. Um, let's see if there's anything else that I want to cover before we get into it. I guess not. We did all the official announcements this morning, and everybody was here this morning, so I won't try to think of those. Praise the Lord. So let's go ahead and pray, and we'll get into the Word. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come and to receive from your Word. We thank you, Father, the Holy Spirit is the teacher of the church and so father we just give him free reign here tonight to speak through me and to guide us and direct us in the study of the word of God and we just thank you for the things that you will bring out tonight in Jesus name amen all right Luke chapter 17 very familiar portion of scripture here beginning in verse 5 the apostle said unto the Lord increase our faith and the Lord said, If you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. But which of you, having a servant plowing or feeding cattle, shall say unto him by and by, when he has come in from the field, Go and sit down to meat? But will not rather say unto him, Make ready wherewith I may sup, and gird thyself, and serve me, till I have eaten and drunken, and afterward thou shalt eat and drink. Doth he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I trow not. So likewise ye, when you have, shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. Now, let's go back up to that first part of the, uh, the portion of Scripture here, verse 5, where it says, they said to the Lord, increase our faith. Now, first of all, we've got to ask yourself, a few questions about this. Was this a legitimate question or statement or request on the part of the disciples when they said, Lord, increase our faith? Now, we know several examples where they saw Jesus do something and said, Lord, increase our faith. <laughs> We're not ready for this. Okay? And so I think this was after one of those incidents. And so they came to him and said, Lord, increase our faith. And Jesus, now did Jesus say, all right, Let's get a prayer line. We'll line everybody up. I'll lay hands on you, and your faith will be increased. He didn't do that, did he? Now, I don't know how many meetings I've been to where the minister in a meeting would get up and say, come up here, and I'll lay hands on you, and your faith will increase. And it, just something down in your spirit goes, wait a minute. That's not how faith comes. Faith doesn't come by the laying on of hands. Amen. Amen. No, the Word of God says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Hearing and hearing and hearing the Word. That's how faith comes. So faith doesn't come by laying on hands. So when the disciples here said, Lord, increase our faith, he didn't have a prayer meeting. He didn't have a prayer line. He didn't call them up and lay hands on them. He said, and really here's the thing that a lot of people miss about this. He answered their question or he responded to their statement, to their request. He didn't just blow them off and say, you guys, come on. No, now, faith, faith doesn't increase. So <laughs> you guys are on the wrong track. He didn't say that, did he? He didn't correct them in that sense. No, he said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, or in other words, and we've heard this before, that as a grain of mustard seed kind of implies, now there's a lot of other meanings to this, but it kind of implies that a seed of faith doesn't have to be big doesn't have to be huge. A mustard seed is a tiny, tiny, tiny little seed. I mean, it's so small that if you blew on it wrong, you'd blow it away. I mean, it's just a tiny thing. And used to, back in my day, back in the, you know, the 70s, 
Uh, they had a little glass ball with a mustard seed in it you could wear around your neck, and it was, you know, mustard seed faith. Ooh, boy, I'm something I got a mustard seed on. Well, praise the Lord, you know. That's all well and good. But it did remind us that it's a tiny little seed. But see, the point it, to me is not so much the size, although that's fine. No, the point is it's a seed. Seeds work when they're planted. So he says here, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say, so what do we do with the seed? We plant it. How do we plant the seed? We say it. So he said, you might say to this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root and planted in the sea, and it should obey you. So he said, speak to the issue. Now, you know, I doubt very seriously any of them had sycamine trees they wanted thrown into the ocean. That probably was not <laughs> what Jesus was really getting to here. He's using that as an example. I will say this, it's highly unlikely that, you know, talking to a tree and commanding to go into the ocean uh, is likely to happen. You know what I'm saying? In the natural. I'm just talking in the natural. So I think he used this to strike their thinking. Jesus, what are you talking about throwing trees in the ocean? What is that about? He's trying to strike their thinking. He's trying to get them, kind of shake them from what they've been talking about here. I believe amongst themselves they were talking about, you know, maybe if we ask the Lord, he'd increase our faith. I mean, look at all the things we see him doing. Whew. And he said, why aren't you guys doing these things? So he expects us to. So obviously we need our faith increase. So they went and they asked him this. And he said, well, if you had faith. So the idea here is he believed they had faith. And he said, if you take your faith as a seed and plant it, it would produce. That's what he's really talking about here. Now, this is the thing that I was talking about how Keith Moore said something that got me off on this study. And, uh, and this is it. He was talking about the miracle of the new birth. And you know, very often I think we as believers don't think enough about the fact that the new birth is a miracle supernatural, powerful miracle. I mean, think about it. The Word of God says that is, you know, before we were born again, we were Gentiles without God, with no hope in the world. We were separated from God. The, the sin of Adam had been passed down through mankind. We were hopeless. We were helpless. There was nothing we could do to get ourselves right with God. There's just no way. Now, the Jews at least had a covenant... Us Gentiles, we didn't even have a covenant. I mean, we were really cut off. And yet here we are, and God says to us, you can not only be born again, which I know is a religious term. A lot of people go, oh, what? You know, they don't get it. But here's what he's really talking about. You can be taken from being this kind of creature and made this new creature in Christ Jesus and be grafted into the family of God, a son or daughter of God himself, with a covenant that is not just between man and God, but is between God and Jesus. And Jesus is going to keep that covenant. Always has, always will. And so it's the perfect covenant to be in. Because Jesus is going to keep it, and we get in on him keeping it. Praise the Lord. So it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's, it's beyond our, our possible expectation or imagination. And the thing is, he takes us supernaturally from being this kind of creature without God and without hope in the world and brought over here into the kingdom of God, the family of God. God is our Father, and we're born again, a new creature in Christ Jesus. That is absolutely miraculous. And here's what Keith Moore said that got my attention. He said, when you got born again, it was the single greatest miracle that will ever occur in your life. You, we don't even see it because, you know, we, we kind of, I don't want to say we take it for granted. I don't mean it quite that way. But we, you don't see in the, in the natural realm how powerful a miracle it is. If we could see it in the spiritual realm, maybe we could see it and we could understand it. We could appreciate it more. But praise the Lord, it is the most powerful miracle that will ever happen in your life. And here's what he said that, that struck my attention, caught my thinking. He said a lot of people are looking to have great faith before a great miracle occurs in their life. But the greatest miracle in your life occurred when you didn't know squat. 
when you didn't know anything, when you weren't spiritually mature, when you knew nothing about God other than you had heard enough gospel for faith to come, and you accepted it by faith, and the greatest miracle that will ever take place took place right then. So if that can happen, with you being in that state, how much more can we expect now that we're born again, we're in the kingdom of God, we're in the family of God, and we do know a little more than we did when we first got born again. I got born again in 1969. April of 1969. Long time ago. And I was a young whippersnapper, okay? And I knew, I knew a little bit about the Bible because I'd gone to Baptist church, had gone to vacation Bible school, and I knew some scriptures. I had a few memorized. You know, like good, good Baptist boy. I mean, you know, I could quote you uh, uh, John 3.16 and so forth. I mean, you know, I knew a little bit. But there was no depth there. There was no understanding of spiritual things there. But I got born again. And that opened up a whole new world to me. It gave me a hunger for the Word of God. And over the next few years, now that was 1969, 70, 71, 72, 73, four years that I kind of spiritually did the best I could, struggled, you know, but then in 1973, November of 1973, I heard about the baptism of the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues. And I was at a full gospel business convention, and George Otis was preaching about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and he went through all the scriptures concerning the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. And I mean, it was like somebody took a whole bunch of new scripture and put them in my Bible, because I had never seen them. You know, I was a good Baptist. I had never heard whether there be a Holy Ghost. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just like those, those other Baptists that Paul encountered <laughs> there in Ephesus. Well, you know, they were, they were of John the Baptist, so they had to be Baptist. And so they were the same way. Well, we never heard whether there be a Holy Ghost. Well, I was in the same state. But I heard enough Scripture that I got enough faith that I, he said, stand up, because we couldn't go down to the front. There was too many people. There was literally thousands of people there. And uh, he said, just stand up, lift your hands. Well, I'd never lifted my hands in a service. I didn't know what to do. I kind of came up half-mashed, you know. And he said, lift your hands and then just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Let us send a prayer first and said, begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. I started praying in the Holy Ghost. I was completely, I, I didn't know what to do with myself. I mean, it was like I had been hit by the power of God, and I had been from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, and I felt like I was going to fall over. Didn't have enough good sense to fall over. I kept catching myself. What in the world's happening to me? And I thought, oh, Lord, what have I gotten myself into? You know, and I, I didn't know. But that began, receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. See, I prayed as we started here tonight about the Holy Ghost being the teacher of the church. Once he goes from the outside to the inside and he's in there, he's teaching you all the time. He's revealing scriptures to you all the time. And so I started getting insight into things and it started growing spiritually. And I mean, it just was Katie bar the door. I mean, from then on, whoo, I was sold out. Now, I was 73. By 76, I'd heard of Brother Kenneth E. Hagin and Kenneth Copeland, and it was getting into the word of faith. And I tell you what, it, I praise the Lord for everything that I've heard and received and been taught since. But the thing is, as I began to study this, I started asking some questions, some key questions. And I basically said it this way, what is faith and how does it act? Now it may sound real simple, but it, it got me looking at it slightly differently. What is faith? Well, you know, the first scripture that comes to mind is Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the, uh, the, uh, the evidence of things not seen. The substance of things hoped for, the way it actually reads in the Greek is really interesting. It, it, faith is the giving of substance to things that you have had favorable anticipation or expectation concerning. That's kind of a, a rough translation, but that's, that's a pretty, pretty accurate translation of what it's talking about. Faith is the giving of substance. So faith, look at it this way. Faith is a power of and by God that can cause physical manifestation 
of something that you have hoped or anticipated or expected, or in this case, prayed about. You pray to believe to receive something. You hold fast your faith in that area. Faith gives substance to it. So let's look at some things that faith can do. Faith can come. <laughs> faith can come. In other words, faith has an active verb of come associated with it. And of course we can see that from Romans chapter 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, which I quoted just a few minutes ago. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Now, the word hearing here is the Greek word akoe, A-K-O-E, akoe. It means more than the mere sense of hearing. In other words, more than just hearing with the ears on the sides of your head. But hearing, it implies hearing, receiving, and understanding the teaching. So faith comes by not just hearing the word, but hearing and perceiving and understanding and receiving it into your heart. When you do that, faith comes. So faith can go from point A to point B. All right, it can come. So that's something faith can do. Well, what else can faith do? Faith can fail. That's, that's something we don't talk about very much in faith circles. But it is scriptural. Let's look over at Luke 22, verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you his wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. But Jesus said his faith could have failed, but he's praying that it won't. So faith can fail. Now, not if you hold on to the Word of God, not if you confess the Word of God, not if you maintain your position you know, in the things of God, obviously, but faith can fail if you let go of it. And it, here where it says that uh, Jesus was concerned that Satan who had desired to have Peter, might sift him as wheat. In other words, he was concerned Peter would leave, let go of the things of God, and therefore his faith would fail. So faith can fail, but it doesn't have to. I want to be sure to, to make that point. It doesn't have to. All right, faith can be great. Faith can be great. Let's look at Matthew 8, 7. Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come into my roof. Now that was because there was a rule in the Jewish uh, religion that uh, Gentiles could not come into their homes. He wasn't trying to make some statement about, well, I'm just unworthy. That wasn't the point. He understood the cultural norm that Gentiles weren't supposed to come into Jews' homes. So he said... Uh, you know, I know that I can't come under your, your, or you shouldn't come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed, for I'm a man under authority, having soldiers unto me, and I say unto this man, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh, and to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled, and said unto them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, faith can be great, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. So you can have great faith. Let's look at uh, Matthew 15, 28. Then Jesus answered and said unto the woman, O woman, great is thy faith. So faith can be great. Great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. So faith can be great. Well, it stands to reason if faith can be great, it can be little. It can be small. So let's look at that, Matthew 8, 24. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, and so much that the ship was covered with the waves, and he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. Boy, you see where their face at. <laughs> hey, Lord, we're perishing. <laughs> oh, boy. And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Their faith was little. The centurion's was great. The woman's was great. Theirs was little. It had now... Here, I'm, I'm going to say something here that is a, it'll sound real heavy and scientific, but I don't mean it to. Faith has a quantitative position, maybe is the way to say it. Faith has a quantitative uh, ability in itself. In other words, it can be great, it can be little. You can increase it, it can diminish. So faith 
Remember, we, we, we said a part of our definition of faith early on was that faith is a power from and of God. Well, let me ask you this. Can electrical power be increased? Can it diminish? Can you have great electricity and little electricity? Yeah, it's the same way. You can, it doesn't change the nature of the power. Electricity is still electricity. Electrons flowing are still electrons flowing. It's the same thing, but you can have a lot of it or you can have a little of it. You can throttle that electricity down or you can increase it. You can do that with a transformer and capacitor and so forth. So power can be increased, power can be diminished. Same thing. I, often, I, I like what I heard, I think it was Lester Summerall many years ago made the statement that faith is in the spiritual realm like electricity is in the natural realm. I think it was less or something, I'm not 100% sure. But it's a good example because you can't really see electricity. You can see the results of it. You don't see the electricity. You say, well, I saw sparks. Yeah, you saw a result of the power. But the power that's flowing is just electrons flowing. So electricity has power, and if you use it correctly, it can be a great blessing. If you use it incorrectly, it can hurt you badly. Well, the power that we're talking about in terms of the spiritual realm, faith, is a power. It can be great. It can be little. All right, let's keep going here. Uh, faith can grow. Faith can grow. Let's look at that. 2 Thessalonians 1.3 We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you toward each other aboundeth. These folks' faith was growing exceedingly. In other words, not just growing a little, exceedingly. So they were doing something that allowed their faith to grow. All right? Faith can grow. Faith can overcome. Faith can overcome. First John 5, 4, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So faith can overcome the world. Faith is a power. Faith is a force that can overcome the world. All right, it can, it can grow. It can overcome. It can be built up. Now, Jude 1.20 says, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Now, this is a little bit, they're really building themselves up on they're not necessarily building their faith up by praying in the Holy Ghost. They're building themselves up on their faith. All right? So maybe a little, little different uh, approach to that. Uh, faith is a shield. Faith can be a shield. Ephesians 6, 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you'll be able to quench how many? All of the fiery darts of the wicked. All of the fiery darts. Not some of them. All of them. So faith can be a shield. Faith acts like a shield. Now, again, thinking of faith in parallel to electricity. You know, imagine, if you will, and I, I like to do this course, science fiction, uh, an electrical shield. You know, holding up that shield and crackle, crackle, you know, you see all this power and something hits it and, you know, a science fiction-y kind of approach to this shield. Well, same thing with faith. We don't see it but it's a shield around us. Favor of God is a shield around you as well. Hallelujah. All right, substance. Faith can have substance. We already saw uh, Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We said that that is faith is the giving of substance. It causes manifestation of natural reality. It's the giving of substance of things hoped for. But you, might, could, you could put it this way. Faith gives substance. Faith gives substance. Faith can make you whole. Jesus said in uh, Mark 10, 52, Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Faith made this guy whole. So it can heal you. When we talk about faith healing, well, that makes sense. Faith can heal you. Uh, faith can speak. Your faith can speak. 2 uh, Corinthians 4.13 We having the same spirit of faith according as written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. 
Faith will speak. As a matter of fact, if you have faith, it says here, you will speak. If you have faith, you will speak. Now, a lot of people stop themselves from speaking. They, they try to hold back from speaking. And, and I, I see that as literally an attack of the devil because he's trying to get Christians not to speak because he knows if they speak in line with the Word of God and they hold on to the Word of God and they meditate on the Word of God and they get it down in their heart, they'll speak forth out of their heart and things will start coming to pass and it'll go against his kingdom, Satan's kingdom. So he tries to get Christians not to speak. And he'll just make it where, you know, I don't want, I don't want to go around saying things. Why? You know, I, I remember the scripture, I was actually teaching here at Faith and Victory and I was, I was teaching along and, and I read the scripture that said that life and death, or actually death and life is the way it reads, death and life is in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And I heard myself say out of my own mouth, it what? And I thought, I don't know. <laughs> I said it, but I, well, I don't know. It what? Well, I had to go back and look at the sentence. The system of speaking is the it that it's talking about. If you look at the way the sentence is structured, death and life are the power of the tongue, and they that love it, the power of the tongue, they that love it, the power of the tongue, they will eat the fruit thereof. And then the Lord said this out of my mouth before I knew what I was saying. He said, you've got to love the system. And I started meditating on that. And I thought, you know, I don't really love the system like I should. I kind of resent the system a little bit. Lord, why couldn't it have been what I write down? You know, I could get in my prayer closet and I could write stuff down and let that be what's the determining factor. No, you've got to make it words. I didn't love the system. I was frustrated by the fact that I had to use my words. I had to say. But see, the Lord struck my thinking and changed my thinking because he said it this way. He said, I gave you the system of speaking words to your benefit, not to your detriment. I wanted to help you. I wanted to bless you. I wanted you to have an ability, a power, a, a capability that nobody else has. So I gave you the power to speak my word and see it come to pass in your life. But as I said, Satan is attacking that system. He doesn't want you to like that system. But if you love that system, you'll eat the fruit of that system. Ooh, hallelujah. You begin to speak the Word of God. You begin to say what God's Word says. You begin to enjoy the fact that I get to speak what God says, and it'll start blessing you. Hallelujah. Faith speaks. Faith receives. Galatians 3.14 that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through or by faith. We receive the promise through faith. Now he's talking specifically about the promise of the Lord Jesus Christ and of the Holy Ghost and being grafted into the family of God specifically. But I want to look at it in the broader sense of faith receives. Faith allows us to receive. Faith works. Faith works. Galatians 5, 6. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision but faith which worketh, faith worketh by love. Faith worketh. So faith works. Well it goes on to say also in James 1, 3. Knowing this that trying of your faith worketh patience. Faith works patience. Faith causes patience to be manifest. Now the word patience here is an interesting word. It's actually a word that means uh, cheerful endurance. See, a lot of people will hear that word endurance and think patience and go, yeah, I know, I'm supposed to sit there and go, oh Lord, I'm doing the best I can, but you know, I'm just being patient. Now that's not cheerful endurance. Cheerful endurance is, hallelujah, I'm going to win, praise the Lord. Amen. I always triumph in Christ Jesus. That's cheerful endurance. Yes, there's an enduring. Yes, you confess the word of God. And it's like Jerry Seville said one time, uh, that faith is between the amen and the there it is. You pray the word of God. You confess what you desire. But then there's the there it is, the manifestation. And you standing in faith and patience is between the amen and the there it is. And there may be some time that passes between that amen and there it is. 
But that's where faith and patience comes in. Cheerful endurance, cheerful expectation that it's going to come to pass. And faith can be pleasing. Faith pleases God. Hebrews 11.6, For without faith it is impossible to please God. Now I want you to think about that. There's a whole lot of people resist faith. They don't want to be part of the word of faith. They don't want to talk about faith. They don't want to talk about anything and everything else but faith. But guess what? It is impossible, not just impractical, not just, well, you know, it's harder to please God if you don't have faith. No, it's impossible to please God except by faith. That's the only way that he can please him. So, see, we don't read this in context correctly enough. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For they that cometh to God must believe that he is, but see, that's not enough, just believing that he is. But you also have to believe he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You have to believe that God wants to bless you. And you know, there's a lot of folks don't believe that. You know, I was talking about being Southern Baptist. There's a whole lot of Southern Baptists don't believe that God wants to bless them. Matter of fact, he thinks, uh, you, they think that he's after them with a sledgehammer half the time, I think. But that's not the truth. God wants to bless his people. God wants the very best for his people. He has plans and desires about you and they're all good. Hallelujah. Well, same thing here. Faith pleases God. Faith pleases God. So we can please God. We can receive from God. We can be made whole. We can have substance given to the things that we hope and, and expect uh, and anticipate, favorable expectation. We can overcome by faith. Faith can grow. Faith can increase. All of these adjectives and adverbs <laughs> with regard to faith. Faith acts. Amen. Faith operates. It, it, is a, it is a verb. <laughs> faith is a verb. Let's put it that way. I like that. Faith is a verb. And faith goes forth out of your mouth. Remember what Jesus said. Let's go back up to that very first scripture we read in Luke 17. Where the apostle said, increase your faith. Lord, won't you increase our faith? Oh, Lord, increase our faith. What did Jesus say? Well, if you had faith, which you do, Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. We've heard the word of God. We've heard word here tonight. So faith has come. So he said, if you have faith, which you do, then plant it. How do you plant it? Speak it. Speak the word. If you speak the word, faith will work. Faith will receive. Faith will please God. Faith will overcome. Faith will grow. All of these things we've seen about faith will happen if we just take our faith and plant it like a seed, we'll see it come to pass. And that's really what it's all about. Remember, death and life are the power of the tongue. They that love that power of the tongue, they that love that system, will eat the fruit thereof. We'll be blessed. We'll see increase. We'll see blessing. But we have to work the system. And I find myself saying to myself, I'll talk to myself and I'll say, you know, you need to talk. You need to speak. You need to confess the word. You know, we know to do it, and sometimes we just don't. We just don't do it like we should. So we need to grab a hold of ourselves and say, okay, mouth, start speaking. Start speaking the word of God. That means I've got to put the word in my heart because whatever's in the abundance of my heart is going to come out of my mouth. So that, see, that's how you do it, really, is put the word in your heart. Get it down in there because it will then come out of your mouth. Remember the spirit of faith. Once you get that spirit of faith, faith will speak. Faith will speak. So that's how we determine whether or not we speak the word and thereby whether or not we succeed in the word is to get the word in our heart. One of the key ways to do that, obviously, is coming right here to Faith and Victory Church, hearing the word of God taught. We, get, we hear the word. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. We get it into our heart in abundance, then it comes out of our mouth. So praise the Lord. Other great opportunities. You know, Word of Faith Radio and, and uh, television and speakfaith.tv and all the avenues that we have to hear and receive from the Word of God on a regular basis. I tell you what, I take advantage of them. One of the things I do, one of my habits that I do, is uh, Sunday mornings, 
I'll get up fairly early because I get up early every morning anyway <laughs> to go to work. So I just, I'm in the habit. So I get up fairly early. I'll go into the living room. I'll turn on the TV and I'll turn on Keith Moore's program. And I'll just listen to him teach me the word. I'll get the word built up into me. And by the time I get ready, you know, to go to church and put my clothes on, go into church and come in here, man, I'm cock locked, ready to rock. Ready to receive from the word of God. Because I've already heard word through the uh, Roku channel, which is how I'm listening to it. Through uh, speakfaith.tv beta channel, as a matter of fact, it's what Keith Moore is on. So, praise the Lord. Take advantage of opportunities to hear the Word of God. And when you do hear that Word, faith will come, and these things, faith will come. Faith can be great. Faith can grow. Faith can overcome. Faith can build up. Faith can be a shield. Faith can, is a substance. Faith will make you whole. Faith will speak. Faith will receive. Faith will work. And faith will please God. Hallelujah. So those are the things that I wanted to share with you here tonight. Uh, praise the Lord. Believe you received something out of this. I know I did. I received from this. And I still hold on to that that I heard when he said, greatest miracle that you ever received is when you didn't know nothing. <laughs> so don't hold yourself back and don't give yourself the excuse of, well, you know, if I knew more about faith. No, the greatest miracle took place when you didn't know anything. So, praise the Lord, we've got, we've got all kinds of good things that we can get in on through the Word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, that's what I have for you here this evening. Not my usual long-winded teaching, but praise the Lord, that's what I want. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address PO Box 7752 Greensboro, North Carolina 27417 If you would like to contribute to our ministry please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button Thank you and may God richly bless you for your giving